Miami has the relationship with Dwayne Wade that it does. And Dwayne Wade is the biggest and best athlete we have ever had in South Florida. He somehow beat out Dan Marino, who built a children's hospital in terms of popularity for a new generation. There was a time where no one thought that would happen, that someone would eclipse Dan Marino in this town. If they thought it would happen, they thought it would be a football player. They never thought it would be a basketball well, player. Well, it's not just that Dwayne Wade made this a basketball town more than a football town. That has to do as much with an indictment of the University of Miami and Miami Dolphin football programs as it is about his excellent. But we've talked before about the fact that an entire generation of kids only knows what winning feels like in South Florida as they learn to love sports because th this guy and this team brought it to them because all the other teams have been a nightmare since he came into the league, all of them. You, since Dwayne Wade came into the league, the Marlins haven't won a playoff game, the Panthers haven't won a playoff series, the University of Miami hasn't done anything, and I don't think the Dolphins have won a playoff game either. I don't or they've won one play, been to one playoff game, whatever it is, it's not very much. I think they went to one with Pennington. I think they lost that game at home to the Ravens. So that's what gets people in the door. But that's not why it is that Miami and South Florida has the relationship with Dwayne Wade than it does. I'm about to explain to you why, because it's another example of this. It is rare that you get to see the evolution of a young man into the kind of man that he's become. He gets here and he has been taking out loans to afford uh, the diapers of his child while he's at Marquette. He goes through a messy divorce, learns uh, some of the things that you learn when making some of the mistakes of the NBA uh, and helps after evolving from a mother who was uh, addicted to drugs, building her a church, starts growing in a way that is impeccably professional, always treating just about everybody with an uncommon touch and an uncommon grace, writing books about the importance of fatherhood, even after having not much of a relationship with his own. And what he has done now, which isn't getting enough attention and i'm not really sure honestly how much attention is too much for the kids the young kids of these incredibly famous people but we've been talking a lot about his other son who is in high school with lebron's kid and is very good at basketball and espn is televising some of his games but wade went on the all the smoke podcast and he did something, and this has been talked about in social media circles, but hasn't been really covered by the mainstream because Dwayne Wade and his wife, Gabrielle Union, have been very supportive of gay rights and LGBTQ rights because they have a son who, when people see the photographs of Zion, they are very critical and they are very cruel. And so what Dwayne has said on Showtime's All the Smoke podcast is, quote, I watched my son from day one become into who she, who she now eventually has come in to. And for me, nothing changes in my love. Nothing changes in my responsibilities. So all I had to do now is get smarter, educate myself more. And that's my job as a father. Me and my wife are having conversations about us noticing that Zion wasn't on the boy vibe that Zaire was on. And I had to look myself in the mirror and say, what if your son comes home and tells you that he's gay? What are you going to do? How are you going to be? How are you going to act? It ain't about him. He knows who he is. It's about you. Who are you? First of all, you want to talk about strength and courage. My 12-year-old has way more than I have. You can learn something from your kids. And I'm speaking for so many others in the LGBTQ community. All these people that are out there saying these things, look at yourself. Understand that you're the ones that have the issues. You're the ones that got the problem. It's not the kids. It's not the ones who decide, yeah, you're born a certain way. You got to be that way. 
That's not life, man. We talked to John Amici on South Beach Sessions. He's a clinical psychologist. He's a brilliant man. And he's talking about the idea of if you are a parent who is building and nurturing your children to simply be what you expect them to be, you have failed as a parent. There are so many people in sports who in this particular circumstance, the narcissism would make this story about them instead of their child. The idea that Dwayne Wade, I told you earlier this week, Tommy Lasorda had a gay son and what just was mortified that anybody would find out about it when he was at the height of American fame. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I could hear people saying, well, of course, that's how you react when your kid comes home with that. No, that's not how everyone reacts, what you just this, heard from Dwayne this Wade. Is yes. not, no, no, not even is, close. No, right. absolutely not. Right. It, he is absolutely right when he says you will find your problems on this particular subject in the mirror because, of course, the father who grew up around the testosterone of sports might be tempted to some sort of shame because he doesn't want to play a pronoun game with he and she. But that makes the rearing of your child about you instead of about the rearing of your child. So the I, this, is a, this is an uncommon bravery for Dwayne Wade to be out there. And to him, I'm sure it's the most common thing in the world. It's what real love is. Do you love so much that you're willing to change whatever it is your ignorant beliefs have been to simply support? Is your love pure enough to support what your child wants because your job as a father, the man has written books about fatherhood because your job as a father is not to turn that child into what you want him or her to represent. It's to nurture that child, give that child the belief and love that that child needs so that child can become who he or she truly is. And this story can't be talked about. It honestly can't be talked about enough, but it's been sort of a, a, a dangerous talking point for people because you don't know how much in the mainstream to reveal what is Dwayne Wade's private life about a preteen that they are choosing to share on social media, but Dwayne Wade continues to be a leader in every way, a guy that you want to follow because he is willing to admit to you something along the lines of the problem was with me. I realized through the love of my child, I told you this, Dugats, my, my Latins are, uh, Latins are historically and famously homophobic and John Amici, who I just mentioned, uh, I had passed me down from generations before me, great grandparents, whatever it is that you have around the toxic masculinity and I had all manner of ignorance about homophobia. And then I met John Amici and I respected him too much to keep the same belief system because my belief system was simply ignorant. I did not know any better. And so I managed to learn the idea that Dwayne Wade in this climate not only is not ashamed of his son, not only is willing to refer to his son as she, but is also willing to proudly share that world and that word with everybody as a supporter coming from the same franchise where Tim Hardaway famously said, I hate gay people. And Tim Hardaway, to his credit, has also done all of the work necessary to realize where his ignorance was. I mean, it is a flabbergasting tribute to the man that Dwayne Wade, after his playing career, could somehow be more of a role model than he was as a maximum professional during his playing career. Splash! Very serious segment. You were good, though, man. I mean, you're a writer. I, I mean, good job, Dan. Good job. No, it's got to be. Uh, no. You were good. You were good, Very man. Very serious subject good. matter. We go to the bucket of death next. I thought I was pretty good, too. Just saying the most obvious thing? Yeah, just prodding you on, man. Being there for you, man. Listening to you. Good job, Stigatz. Thank I'm you. I'm pretty sure that you were making wagers on the Bahama Bowl while I was talking. I did. First half. 